Hi, I'm Trish Dixon, editor of Boxing News, and I'm here today joined by promoter Frank Warren. Okay, so Frank, you've been in the business now, getting on for 40 years, about to start another new season. How much enthusiasm have you got coming into this new new era and new season? Well, I'm very enthusiastic about the season. I'm very enthusiastic about boxing, and you know, sometimes you get your little knockbacks, but at the end of the day, that's what we're about. You know, we are a boxing company. We don't do in any other sports. We're in boxing. That's what we do 24-7. We're here, we develop young fighters. That's been our forte, developing young fighters, bringing them through, taking guys to championship level and hopefully onto you know, world championships. And, uh, and invariably, we deliver, deliver the goods. Most of the champ world champions from this country have emanated from my team. Yeah. Your sons, George and Francis, are involved in the business now as well. How much, how much of your, how much of your motive, your current motivation is down to wanting to to show them the ropes and, and bring them on? Board? Well, I prefer them not to be involved. I said before, but they're in the sport, and obviously um, I'll do all I can to help them. But they're their own own men. Um, they've got their own views of how they want to promote shows. They've they've started right at the grassroots level at York Hall shows. Um, they've signed some some boxers to promotional deals. They've done extremely well. They're, they they. I think the way they've been marketing their shows, most of their shows have been sellouts. They've had some cracking fights already uh, on on their bills, and I'm quite proud of the way they're progressing. And I'm sure they you know they'll they'll go on to bigger and better things. What are your main goals for the season ahead, 2012 into 2013? I think to the, the world champions that I'm involved with to consolidate their positions and get them into into uh, really big fights, um, to deliver as we always do the best shows. Uh, to deliver the type of fights the fans want to see. I mean, we've got we've got our first big show is in Glasgow on the 22nd of September, and it doesn't get any, I think, domestically bigger or a more tastier fight than uh, Ricky Burns and Kevin Mitchell. It's a fans' fight. It'd be a great fight. It'd, it'd be a candidate, if not the winner of Fight of the Year. And I'm 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 sure of that. Be passionate, um, and that's how we how we are, and that's how we aim to continue. How hard is it put? How hard is it to put together a, a fight, a fight of that magnitude, without big commercial backing from a big major TV station? Well, you got to remember, at the end of the day, Sky, the Sky that I got involved with years ago, is a different animal than what Sky is today. I did a deal in 1995 for 22 million pounds, taking my stable of fighters from ITV across. Um, my last contract with Sky, um, and I think all the promoters were on roughly eight dates a year, if I remember rightly. You were lucky if you generated £800,000 in total. So how are you supposed to run a business on that? Um, Barney Francis, who's a nice enough chap, he's got his views on boxing and people in boxing. He was, it, it, at times it was very difficult for me to speak to him where I've probably been sport and been used to picking up the phone, speaking to Vic Wakeling direct, Sam Chisholm direct, um, Tony Ball direct, you know, they were, they were the, they were the uh, chief, chief executive officers of Sky. So I had that relationship and that helped and we run pay-per-view shows, but when Barney decided no more pay-per-view, I thought that was not good for boxing. I thought we were suffering from the debacle of Hay versus Audley Harrison which, if I remember rightly, um, was, being, was being promoted as being the best thing since sliced bread and that Aldi Harrison was going to shake the world when he, he's never shaken anything. Um, and, it was, and that killed boxing. That killed pay-per-view and it killed opportunities for fighters. So people say, yeah, but we don't want to be paying more money for pay-per-view. But if you don't, that money doesn't come across. We don't be, we're not able to generate that type of income. Then you're not going to get the big fights in this country. And what you've seen happen in my opinion, uh, since I've left Sky, is that four or five guys have had to go overseas to challenge for world titles, and every one of them have been beaten. And maybe, if some of those fights had taken place in the UK, they may have won them. Matthew Macklin, for example. If that fight had been in the UK, that decision may have gone his way. Um, and there are quite a few situations like that. So my, de my decision last year was to leave Sky, walk away, and to set up, um, with the help of... Uh, the people that I'm involved with, uh, our own channel and be in charge of our own destiny. And we're in charge of our own destiny. We're not beholden to anybody. I haven't got to go and brown nose anybody. I've not got to go big up anyone. Whatever, we, we stand or form what we do. And there are a lot of people in the business who want to see this, this uh, venture fall on its face and they still do, which I find surprising. Because even our most, if I can't say enemies, but our competitors 
you would think they had the intelligence and the brains to realise if there's a Box Nation or if there's another TV company showing boxing, then it's going to be good for them with their negotiations with Sky, but they don't seem to get it. If you've got one TV company dominating, the rights fees will drop and drop and drop. And that's basically what's happened over the last few years. The rights fees have, 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 have dropped down. So Box Nation, was, the, was, was, was for me, was probably the biggest thing I've ever done in my whole time in boxing, to actually go ahead and do that. And I thought that... You know, myself, the fighters who, who are with me, I thought were all very, it, it was quite a brave venture for us to do. Something I wasn't anticipating doing in this time in my life, but that's, that to me is the way forward. And that's how, how TV, the TV business has changed over the years. You know, we've become a, in a situation where if you look on, if you go on TV, um, you want a do-it-yourself program, there's a do-it-yourself channel, there's a holiday channel, there's a, there's a movie channel. Yeah. So whatever genre you're interested in, you can go and find, and that's what we've done with boxing. Do you think boxing has a big enough fan base to do that? Well, Box Nation's very successful. Yeah. We are, as far as subscribers are concerned, on the business plan that we, we put together and, and when we started operating last September, we are 100% ahead of where we anticipated being. How much of that was helped by Hay and Chisora? It, yeah, that helped it. That, of course, it helped it. Uh, it but, you know, that, that was the objective. You know, what we put in fights on for. We put in fights on to, to, to obviously sell to subscribers. But you've got to remember, it's not just about my shows. Um, if you think back, you know, or you think now, when did you or the boxing news readers ever get a chance to see regular boxing from America? Fights that would never hit the screens. You know, we've got an output deal with um, Golden Boy. We've had. Shows on from top rank. We've had Don King shows on. We've got an output deal with Salons, showing the best from Europe. We've had fights from all over the world. How much has been more amateur boxing on Box Nation than there's been on any channel? Mm. You know, we're behind it. That's what it is. What it says on what it says on the tin is exactly what it is. And I look back over the years. I remember when I when I went to Sky and everybody and Sky. I think at that time had they probably had about. Um, 35% of the subscribers they've got now, and everybody said, that's the end of box and it's dead. And I brought this guy along that you know, nobody, maybe in the trade a few people have heard of, but I, I developed Ricky Hatton on that channel when nobody said it could be done. And as being his promoter and manager, guided him into, into being into a situation where he, he got his home advantage and fought Costa Zoo, and you know, the rest is history. But that happened with, when Sky was a different animal. And it's changed now. They're interested in two things. They're interested in Premier League, and you've seen they busted the bank for the Premiership rights. Um, and that's, that contract starts on in, in 2013 season. So you know that you know that there's going to be some cost cutting there again. And they put a fortune into Formula One. And you know that's the two sports where their heads are. They show a lot of other sports, but that's where all the money is going. And boxing has suffered. They've cut their output by, I think, 50% on the channel. So, but they, it's good for boxing. They're still doing. They've been great for boxing. They will continue to be great for boxing because I want to see boxing on all the channels. The more more sport, the more people see the sport, the better it's going to be, um, and that's fine. But don't denigrate Box Nation to try and justify Sky because that's that's a, that's a nonsense. Yeah. You know, the best fights you've seen, the, the you know the best events and fights we've seen this year, I would say most of them have been on Box Nation, okay. bar none. On a Mayweather fought on Box Nation, Klitschko's fought on Box Nation, you had Klitschko, Ch Klitschko Chisora, you had Hay. You almost said Klitschko Chisora. Char there. Didn't I nearly you? did, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you did have that. No, as well. but Klitschko Char, but that's yeah, what it's you all about. You're showing, the, yeah. you're showing the best heavyweight in the world, yeah. according to how it is. That's what the channel's delivering. So sure. they're, they're, that, for me, if I'm a boxing fan, I want to see what the fuss about. That's what I'm seeing. And it's a tenner a month. Two pound fifty a week. That's less than a pint of beer. How can that? It's not like you change any, anybody's pockets. I think everybody's had great value for money, and and, and remember, we we we've had to do that. We we had two investors when we started this business off. Two investors signed a shareholders agreement, and those two investors didn't come up with their money when we were three months into transmitting. So can you imagine what the kick in the ghoulies that was? Yeah. But we persevered. And it, and, it was, and it was a real tight, hard financial struggle to keep, keep going, to be quite honest. Yeah. But we did it. And we've done it in probably the worst economic climate there's ever been. So could you imagine if the economy had been better now, how well we'd been doing? Yeah. And, we're, you know, and we're there now. We, we, we've, hit, we've hit a really good... Um, we're in a good place at the moment. 
We've got a lot of good things coming up over the next 12 months and there'll be a bit of a better quality channel. We'll be looking to go HD. That's, that's in the process of being done. We've got um, Richard Brook, chairman under his chairmanship. He's been, he's been brilliant. Um, he was the former finance director for Sky TV. Simon Green, you know, he's got an impeccable record, um, so much so that he's, uh, he's been asked by BT to head up their channel um, right. for the Premiership, which is, um, you know, something that's going on at the moment. Um, so, you know, good calibre people there, good quality fights we're doing, all the best promoters in the world. Yeah. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I am really pleased, and I just feel that, you know, some of the stuff, when I'm hearing boxers, you know, boxers like Tony Bellew, I will never fight on on Box Nation because I'm on Sky and all this crap. You know, the last prize fights are on Sky. Go and look at the look at the ratings. Got less than 100,000 viewers. You know, that's 50% of our audience mm. at the moment. And it goes up. I mean, you know, it, it went right up for the Chisora fight. So, you know, we, we, we're, doing, we're, we're, we're very happy and I just find it, as I say, I find it stupid. All the best fighters in the world have fought and being, their fights have been broadcast on Box Nation, all of them. That indicates you're around the 200,000 mark. Well, I'll leave you to you'll leave <laughs> you to sort the math out, but the fact of the matter is, you know, we're really, really, really pleased where we are. And remember, we've got some good stuff coming up, Yeah. And, and even better stuff next year. Next year is going to be a big year for us, a big year. Well, you mentioned the amateur stuff, and looking, for, looking further forwards, um, you obviously were were interested in the London 2012 Olympics. Yeah. What did you make of the fighters, and have you have you got your eye on anyone, or is there anyone that you've spoken to so far? So far. I thought it was brilliant for boxing. You know, the Olympics. Obviously, the bit home advantage helped um, in in some of the some of the fights. But um, the you know, it's, it's no secret that the one I really do like is Anthony Joshua. I think I think he'll be a brilliant professional. I really do think you know he'll, he'll go places. When you consider he's only had, uh, he's, he's been a pro for four years, and when I look, when I thought was a game which was on Box Nation, World Championships from Azerbaijan, that final he got into with the local guy there, yeah, you know that was a very close decision, and he, and for me more important about whether he won it or he lost it, who you know how much it was, you know it was debatable. For me, he showed a lot of things in in in, in that fight that made me really think he's going to go places. He's got a big heart, the kid. Um, in the games, you know, he did well. A couple of, there are a couple of faults that he needs to work on. He drops his hands. It's, and it's, it's a habit that hopefully he'll stop. Um, but, you know, he's got, one thing about him, he's got a good heart. He can punch and he's got a good chin. Yeah. And, I, and I like him. I think he can go places. He's, uh, and then, you, you know, uh, Luke Campbell did well. Uh, Anthony Gogo, you know, a few, few, few good fighters there, you know. But um, we'll see what happens in the next next few months where these guys turn pro. Yeah, is it harder? Is it, do you think because of the funding they get? Is that get hard, does that make it harder for you to try and get them to come on? No, board? I mean, you know, if, if you, if, I don't see the point of Anthony Joshua or Luke Campbell or anybody who's won a gold medal waiting for another four years to go to Brazil. They've won a gold medal, and all they're going to do, really do over the next four years is probably fight, or certainly the next two years, is fight the guys they fought in the Olympics. It's a round robin, isn't it? You're not going to be, there's nobody's going to suddenly burst on the scene in the next two years, I don't, right. I, I don't believe. So that's where it is, where that's at. And yeah, they get their money, but you know, Anthony Joshua can go out and, as a heavyweight, and the, the, what, the, what the charisma and, and his style, I think, can earn some serious money, you know. You know that that that'd be what he gets is a bit of funding, but that'd be chump change to what he can what he can actually. But the achieve. packages that were available to the likes of Audley and when you signed James DeGale, are they is it fair to say that those kind of offers aren't going to be on the no, table? I mean, I don't. It's, it's been because a of the landscape. Million pounds, of course, it's changed. The whole economy's changed, hasn't it? It's it, it's fact. The only it seems the only sport it hasn't, or the only industry it hasn't hit really is Premiership football. Everybody else. The suffering, no matter where you are, banks, whatever it may be, in, you know, clothing businesses, everything, everybody's suffering. Uh, premiership money just hasn't changed because the sky throws so much money at it. And, and obviously the, the money get from around the world for their rights. But I think that um, as far as, you know, as far as Anthony Joshua is concerned, he, him, if he turns pro in the ring, he, he will certainly make a lot of money and very quickly, mm. in my opinion. Okay. So you mentioned that there's a lot to look forward to, but you've also said that it's, it has been a difficult year. How difficult has it been 
with the extra strain that you've taken with Box Nation. I mean, you've had so many big things in the past. Obviously, that massive legal fallout with Don King, loads of loads of other issues in the past. I mean, how how has this compared with some of the more stressful periods? Well, can I just uh, you know, everybody talks about the Don King case that I lost the case and it cost me a lot of money. And actually, people don't understand what the case was about. So I'm just clear this up hopefully <laughs> once and for all on camera. Don King and I were partners and we at the end of the day wound up in court and during the jury, nobody gave any evidence, we didn't even get to the stage of giving evidence, a settlement was agreed and for that settlement was that Don King would get a, a sum of money and what I would get was every, all the contracts and all the rights, television rights that were from fights that had taken place, all the rights back and that suited me down, down to the ground. What I've done, I've taken back all, my, all the fighters that I were involved with, rather than being in a 50-50% situation, they, became back, they came back to me in a 100% promotion. Right. So he got some money, I got the contracts back, and within a couple of months, I think I went up promoting Mike Tyson, and I got all the showtime dates. So it worked out how it worked out. Um, that was a tough time. It was a tough time, but, you know, it was a lot of money. I've been a lot tough. I've been, yeah, it was a lot of money, but, you know, it was a lot of money, but there was a lot of money to pay it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like there, you know, it got paid, so yeah. it got done. And then I, just so you know, in short, I then sued the uh, the solicitors who drafted the agreement, and uh, a settlement was agreed with them, so yeah, that's how it worked out. So I can't complain about that, you know, it sued, it, it, it got to where it got to. But the fact of the matter is, has the last year been, well, it's been a tough year for anybody anywhere hasn't it who who hasn't it been tough for i'm sure your i'm sure your circulation has dropped a bit all the newspaper circulations has been continually dropping and that's been go, going going on for for quite a few people in, in different businesses and walks of life but from my point of view it's the toughest because as i mentioned earlier the, the couple of in, so-called investors who you know didn't deliver so i had to take on the, the financial burden and it was a killer for me really tough of course it was tough um but we did it yeah. You know, a couple of people got paid late. When I mean got paid late, got paid a couple of weeks late. You know, and a couple of people were really loyal, like Ricky Burns and I'm talking about real loyalty, Nathan Cleverly, Ricky Burns, real stand up, proper people, decent people. And you know, and I'm one one thing about me, I'm hot on loyalty. And you ask Paul Smith or any of those guys, they'll tell you that. They they show it to me, I'll show it back as much as I can. And and it was tough, but you know, we delivered and we've, we've worked through this terrible and tough environment and I've done that with the help of a lot of friends, reputation and, you know, for me it's, it's sad when you look at a couple of, a couple of boxers that I've been involved with, such as Tony Bellew, who I think is one of the most ungrateful people I've ever met in my whole life. You know, I showed you a list of texts that came through to me over the last, up until April, not a problem. You've read them, not a problem. All on my phone, all texted from him, you know, and talking about hotels and whatever, you know, it's, it's just outrageous. He's owed me money for five months. The Board of Control wrote to him and told him if that money was not paid, then there would be problems for him regarding disciplinary matters. And he deposited that money last week. Five months for me to get paid. Five months. Okay. Just um, switching tax back to Box Nation. What do you say to people who say it constricts the audience of, for boxing? Um, how does it constrict the audience? The shows wouldn't take place if they weren't on Box Nation because Sky won't pay the money for big shows to take place. So you're either going to watch it or you're not going to watch it. Um, ITV won't show boxing. BBC are not interested in professional boxing. Channel 5 are showing some boxing and good for them. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I can't sit around and be, be, be it to the behest of, of another sport, which is what was happening at the Sky. You know, I'm waiting for um, the likes of uh, how much money they're going to spend on the Premiership. You know, how much money they're going to spend on Formula One. I'm sorry, I can't, you know, I'm not going to be doing that. So we've not constricted the audience. We've actually delivered an audience, an, an audience that is willing to watch the channel and it's not for and the point that I keep making about this we're not charging 15 pounds or 20 pounds 20 quid they charge for the pay-per-view for um for Scott some of these sky shows it's 10 quid a month 10 pounds a month as I keep saying two pound 50 a week so we're not 
challenge in anybody financially, yeah. even in these tough and difficult times that we're in. A couple of fights have slipped through the net. That, well, people say they slipped through, through the net that have wound up on prime time, such as Chavez Martinez and the Pacquiao yeah, fight. Is, is that... W were you in the market for those fights? Were you trying to... I don't know, really. I, I, I have to speak to Simon about it. We're in the market for all fights, but, you know, you, you don't have a, 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 a... You know, you haven't got an infinite budget. No. You know, you have a budget and you work towards that budget. If they've gone on prime time, they've gone on prime time. You know, if they've gone on prime time, they've had to pay more money to watch them on prime time had they had to pay to watch them on Box Nation. Yeah. And, again, is that constricting the market that goes on prime time? You know, anywhere we can get boxing on now, any any... Any outlet has got to be good for the game. Otherwise, the sport's going to be dead. Are you surprised terrestrial TV generally has the stance, take Channel 5 out of the equation, that they have towards boxing, given the numbers? It's not only generated in the past, but the numbers it's generated, A, on pay-per-view, and B, with Tyson Fury oh. getting sort of three million on a Channel yes. 5 show. Well, I can think of doing six and a half million with Amir Khan at 11.30 at night when, they, when we got pushed out to the most horrible slot. I mean, why'd they put us on at 11.30 at night? They normally, on ITV, probably, they're lucky to hit a million audience on that night. We've got six and a half million people watching it. Um, and that tells you the mentality. You know, ITV are not interested in boxing. End of story. I've met with them. I sat down with Niall Sloan. I've met with the directors. They have no interest in professional boxing. And no interest. And the BBC is exactly the same. I even offered them. I even offered to do deals with them based upon the amount of the you know on ratings. Mm. We hit hit certain numbers, then pay me by the success because I I believe in that I can promote them and deliver the ratings. But that was not to be. You know, BBC is a disgrace. They're an absolute disgrace as far as the sports concerned, um, and they're not interested in it. There is a, there is a real. You know, radio is good. BBC Radio are into it, but the BBC TV have no interest. And you, I think you're dealing with people who are really anti-boxing more than anything. Mm. Okay. How, with regards to box station and boxing in general, how do you think, how's the, how, and bearing in mind some mainstream uh, channels are closed when you look at terrestrial TV and when you look at the amount of coverage football gets in the national press and stuff, how difficult is it to preach to a new audience and not continuously preach to the converted? Um, I don't think it's so diff difficult because I think each generation of boxer brings a new audience along. You know, Nassim Hamid, when I marketed Nassim Hamid, and when he came to me, he couldn't draw flies. We put him on in Sheffield and we gave half the tickets away, his first fight. But I put it on ITV and again worked it on the ratings. We went out 11.30 at night and that was the days when Bob Burrows, who was a big supporter of boxing, him and Trevor East were there at the time, um, and we did a bit of good rating. But we marketed Naz through kids' magazines. It was not. We weren't interested in the rest of the press. We did it through kids, and his 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 audience was young. Was a young audience, a very very young audience. So much so, um, a deal was done with Adidas to sponsor him. They paid a million quid, huge money in those days. Yeah. That was in the nineties, and uh, that's where we went with it. So he brought a new audience along. Frank Bruno had a particular audience. Like he had the granny factor. All the old mums and dads liked him. You know, as well as a young audience. And all fighters are different. They all bring something different to the part. And my job as a promoter is not only and manager, it's not only to guide their careers and map out who they're going to box and try to get them into the situations you want them to be into, but also bring their bring their their, their talents um, to to the, to the notice of, of, of the general public. And I think, all in all, I'm not done a bad job of that. I mean, you go back to I can remember go back to um, when. Ricky Hatton got beat in Vegas a few years ago, and, uh, and, and Joe Kawasaki and him, the, on that sports personality a year old, Joe Kawasaki won it. Ricky Hatton come third, beat everyone. Beat and the Enzo got trainer. The yeah, year and then Enzo. So, you know, I didn't do a bad job. Yeah. You know, I didn't do a bad job in doing that. But it's a lot of, you know, can I tell you something? There's a lot of, st you know, boxing, being a promoter, it's not about mouthing out all the time, I can do this, I'm better, it's a new, I mean every year there's a new promoter, or every couple of years who's gonna come in, it's a new deal, boxers are getting ripped off, it's the same old story, you hear from all of them, and every one of them, most of them have fallen by the wayside. You go back over the years, all the people got TV deals as well, all, all fell by the wayside. Naz had a TV deal, I don't think loads, I won't go mention all the names. Every time they've come into this sport saying what they're going to do. It's not about the promoter, it's about the box, it's about delivering. And, you know, we've got another situation going now with Sky. I'm, 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 it's gonna be in, you asked you ask me to sit down 
Oh, I think it was Donald McRae asked me to sit down and do a head-to-head -head interview with um, Eddie Hamm. Well, why on earth would I do that? What, what is he going to tell me what I don't know about my sport? He's never managed or guided a fighter from grassroots level to win a world title. So what do I want to be sitting down having a discussion about that? I'll do that discussion in a couple of years' time when he does that, if he does that. We'll see what happens in the next couple of years. I've seen it so many times, all this stuff. Let's see what happens. He's got a strong stable together. He's got a strong stable of fighters that, that, uh, of fighters that were mostly um, promoted and brought together by, by other promoters. You know, Carl Frock. Um, Nick Hennessy done a lot of hard work with Carl Frock. Carl Frock's a decent fighter, but to call him a legend, you know, talking to him a legend now, well, he didn't get beat Kessler. He had a tough fight with Durrell. He was lucky, a good job was at home when the fight was over here. And he got taken to school by Andre Ward. It's hardly a British legend. He had a good win against Boutsé. He had a very good win against Boutsé. Tough, strong fighter. Who are the rest of them? You know, Kel Brook had a world title fight offered by me in writing two years ago. He left me, or sorry, he didn't leave me. I actually told his father I didn't want to promote him anymore. To hit the road because I couldn't stand the interference but he's left he's gone off he's gone off now where was that world title fight two years on where is it do you remember go and read all, go and read all the quotes all the comments that were made back then I think I, I spoke to you over some of the things that were written in and said in boxing news but the fact of the matter is it's not happened so let's see it happen you know so much so much of that and it's very easy to say all these things and they are done by the and Tony Bellew to say that fighting Miranda a couple of weeks ago or was it last week? You know, it doesn't. You know, this is these are the type of fights I want. Well, I gave him a world title fight against Nathan Cleverly in his hometown. Surely that's a better fight than fighting some old guy of 31, 32, seen better days in his hometown. I gave him home advantage in his hometown, and he lost the fight mm. to the better man on the night. And he, what he couldn't accept that the better man won. That's the that's the real bottom line of it. And he talks like he he talks, and everyone he talks like he won the fight. Nathan Cleverly's the guy who went at the other guy's backyard. He's the one who stepped up to the plate, walked into the lion's den, and won the fight. And that's that's the, that's the reality of it all. So yeah, it's a, there's some very good. It's got some. There are some good potential good fights. Yeah, let's see what they do and what and what, what comes out of it. It'll be interesting to see. I want to see some of these guys fill big stadiums. Let's see what they do. Okay. Let's um, talk about some of your current stable. Obviously, we've got Burns Mitchell yeah. coming right ahead, so you can't really map out what's going to happen with either of them for the next 12 months, because you need to see what's going to happen with that. But cleverly, who we're going to assume, take it as read that he's going to win. I know... That, well, I, know I hope he does. No, <laughs> I, no you, say, you say you hope you win. One thing let's do, he can bang. Yeah. He's not a bad puncher. He's a tough sod. He's never been stopped. Shoeman off, he had on the floor, so we'll see. But the one problem Nathan's got and I'd speak as his manager, is his heart rules his head sometimes, and he wants to have a bang up with people, and so rather than you know go out there and do what he's good at, which is boxing him, he's, yeah. he's got the devil in him, so he wants to do it, and that's why you know, I think some of the fights he has are good fights to watch, but um, we'll see. Yeah, he should win this fight, I hope he wins the fight. The guy's ranked by three, three of the governing bodies. So what would, what would come next, or how, what, how would you map out the next Well, I'm going to try months? and resurrect the thing with Hopkins. That's the fight I would like for him. I think that'd be a good fight for him. I'd like when we were willing to go to the States to do that fight in October. Did you I've seen, yeah, I've seen you a lot of, know, about about communications yeah, yeah, about yeah. Barclays Centre yeah, as well yeah. in, in New York. That's where we were so talking about. Is it? I mean, but you're not, you're not a massive advocate of getting the guys out to not unless Vegas I feel, not, York, not unless I feel that it's right for him. Yeah. And I and I and I think I, I think it's the old adage that we always say styles make fights, and I think Nathan Cleverly's style. It, I think sorry, I think Bernard Hopkins' style and his age. He's no youngster, is he? I think it's good for Nathan. I think it's a good. I think Nathan wins that fight. I may be wrong. It won't be the first time I'm wrong, but I'll get it right most times. And I think that he would um, he would win that fight. Yeah. How, how about the rest of the guys in that division? Pascal, Cloud, all, all I've the got guys we've, we've offered all, you know, we've spoken to all of them about making fights. You know, um, the, uh, Cloud, unfortunately, he was going to fight Pascal. Their fight fell out of bed, but we'd already done done our, our deal. Um, you know that we have Schumann off. We agreed again to go to Vegas, but unfortunately, Don Chagrin, who represented him, couldn't come up with a TV date. So unfortunately, uh, they wouldn't come out. I made them a substantial offer to come here to fight Nathan uh, in uh, October, 27th October, but um, he won't travel Shumanov, mm. which is fine. But Nathan, I've got no problem with Nathan fighting Shumanov in the States. I have no problem in fighting 
um, uh, Bernard Hopkins in the States. No problem at all. Okay. Um, what about Chisora? What happens next for Derek Chisora? Well, he's going to fight in December. In this country? He'll fight. I don't know yet where, where it'll be, but he'll fight in December. I was with him yesterday. Um, he's looking good, and um, he's got to get himself back in, in the game. He, you know, that fight was uh, f putting all the what happened, all the nonsense aside, all the rubbish that went on uh, surrounding the fight. But if you look at the fight on the night, that was a great fight. It was a, it, I mean, a great fight. It was a really electrifying night. Mm. Great promotion. You know, biggest promotion this country's had this year, bar none, ticket wise, people who attended. Um, and a great fight to watch. And, you know, Derek was unlucky in some ways. I mean, he caught, he caught David Hay with a real good shot at the end of the third round. And that bell went, if you remember, the, the simultaneous. The simulta almost, yeah. Well, there's a lot, there was a bit of talk where it was a little bit early. But anyway, what happened happened. But he was, you know, he, he got, you know, David was a bit, was a bit shaken by the, by the punch. And, you know, you got you can't take one from David Hay. He's a dangerous he's dangerous yeah. a dangerous fighter. He's a good puncher. I mean I've been a big critic at him in the past, but I've got to tell you something. On the night I thought he really boxed well and you know, and the best man won on the night and you can't take that away from him. And I'm sure next year he'll fight Klitschko. Have you got any options on Hay? No, no. It was a fight we just agreed to make. Have you got a deal you've had the last couple of Klitschko fights, have you got a deal with them moving forwards with the Klitschkos? We'll see what happens. <laughs> depends, it depends on the opponent. It's all about money, isn't it, and what yeah. happens. But, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the, the channel can afford to do, they'll do. Yeah. You know, we'll take a gamble every now and then, you know. Like Mayweather was a, was a big fight for the channel to get. You've had a lot of, I mean, not, well, you personally and, and the channel had a lot of flack around the Chisora and Hay fight. Everyone involved in it did to, 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 to a certain extent. Was it worth all the grief? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I stand by what I said from day one. You know, he wasn't banned from boxing. His license was withdrawn, and what, what was done was legal. And it, you know, like all my promotions, we look, we make sure that the, the paramount, the paramount, what's paramount in all the promotions is public safety and the boxers' welfare. So the medical safety, medical aspects of it, were spot on. Public uh, safety and, and the security and so forth were spot on. It was a great atmosphere there. A lot of people turned out, despite probably the worst summer we've had ever had. I mean, it peed down of rain for three weeks every single day. It was like monsoons. But, you know, we did well. And, and I thought, I th actually, I thought it was good. And what I thought was good about it, it was the end of the fight. Two guys did what most fighters do after all the nonsense that's gone on. They embraced and, yeah. and I, thought that, I thought that was good. I thought that was good. Can you imagine um, Chisora fighting David Price down the line? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a big fight. You know, David Price has signed now to sign. Uh, Frank Maloney signed a promotional deal with Box Nation. So yeah, why not? That's a big fight. It's a great fight for the fans. What's it like working with Frank again? Well, I'm not working with him. Am I? He's done a TV deal. I mean, and, and you know, the TV deal was put together and uh, by, by separately. Yeah, separately. Yeah. That's what. Yeah, you know, it's not. But you know, people. I, I think the perception what this channel was going to be in September and all the garbage that was said, and if you look at what it is now, I hope everybody understands where where I was coming from with my involvement. It's, this is all about boxing and trying to deliver the best shows. And I think you know most of the fights that have been on there have been quite competitive and been quite well received. And you're getting them from all over the world. You're seeing what's going on around the world. And it's not, and you're getting you know from our point of view as well, our, our shows. You're getting the whole card. Mm. The undercard fighters are getting some exposure. You got, you know, my kids are doing the, the um, box academy series. You know, youngsters getting a chance to get out there and do it, and you know, it's good. Small hall boxing, big boxing, medium size, you know, shows, but lots of action, lots of excitement, and that's what it's about. What happens to um, George Groves next? I've got to tell you, I'm absolutely gutted. Probably not as gutted as he is with all the problems that he's had with injuries and so forth. It's been really, really been a a tough time for him and, and it's not enabled me to do what I'd like to do in promoting him but um, and showcasing him but he'll fight again at the end of se uh, sorry end of November because he got that bad cut in the States he had a good win win over there but he got a bad cut he'll fight again at the end of November and uh, he'll he'll fight for a world title next year um, possibly Arthur Abraham are you looking at uh, that uh, that's at the end of the day Adam Booth that's going to be him and George it'll be their call me I'd make it I'd make that fight in a heartbeat I, I think I think he beats him Mm. Tough fight, but I think he beats him. And they're the type of fights we want to put on. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Frankie Gavin. What about Frankie? Well, Frank's been a 
he's been a bit of a worst of his, his own worst enemy. He's had, he's had a couple of over. The, you think back over the, over the last few years, he had a terrible situation, which you know, personal situation, which caused him a, 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 a sort of a, um, a lull in his career. Came back, then there were some other problems that went on, but you know, hopefully he's back on track now. So, um, purse bids out today for the Witter fight. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, he's going to fight Witter next. That'll be the next fight. Okay. Are you, are you happy? Happy for him to go ahead with that fight? Yeah, I am. I mean, you know, look, look, you know, look. He's been around a while. He's been. I never thought for one moment he'd be fighting at this weight. You know, well, I never thought he'd be there. I, I, you know, he's not a tall guy or whatever. But that's the weight he's fighting at. He's now being trained by Tom Cheney up in Birmingham, who I've got a lot of respect for, and I think actually they got, you know, they, they you know, Arnie done a great job with him. But these two have got a relationship that goes back to the amateurs, so you can see there's a special sort of bond with them. Um, it's a tough fight for him, Witter. You know, whatever Witter, Witter can bang, you know, he can punch. But, you know, if Frank's going anywhere, then, he's got, then these are the type of fighters he's got to beat. Yeah, okay. Do you, do you see him uh, mixing in the company, certainly in the next sort of 12 to 18 months with the likes of Barker yeah. and Matt? Yeah, and yeah, 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 guys? yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, if Barker's still around. Yeah, of course. You know, he's got, unfortunately, he keeps getting his injuries, don't he? Yeah. Barry Hearn spoke to us about, spoke with us, and an offer was made concerning uh, the Boutte fight with Frock. And he also went to speak to other channels when Sky, when he couldn't get the deal from Sky until he got the deal with Sky. So it's a nonsense when you hear all this stuff. It's just, I just find it annoying. And why, and why, why would you say a fight can't happen if it's not on Sky? Why would you say that? You know, years ago, Mickey Duff and I were quite, you know, quite keen rivals, to say <laughs> the least. But my fighters fought on his show. If it, if it was a proper offer or if a purse bid, those fights happened. Yeah. So I, I just don't understand that. So if it goes to purse bids, we could see some of your guys fighting. Well, they have. Guys my, fi my fighters have. My fighters have. You know, he's just won a, he's won a purse bid for, for one of my fights. I've won the purse bid for one of his fights, Kenny Anderson. Is Kenny Anderson going to pull out that fight? That's what worries me now. Mm. Is he going to pull out the fight? Bark, remember, even when I was on Sky, his fighters were pulling out of shows. We had a press conference for Macklin and Barker, and Barker pulled out on the Magnificent Seven show. Yeah. With Sky dropping, dropping their boxing output, does that make your channel stronger? Does that make Box I don't even th I, I don't even think about it that way. I just think we are what we are. You know, we, I don't worry about what Sky are doing. I don't worry about what anybody else is doing because I know what we're doing delivers. You know, you're going to get a bum show every now and then. That's going to happen or a bum fight every night, every now and then, you know. Happens in all sports. You know, of course it does, yeah. I mean, it happens and, 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 and the result going to go your way. That, that's show business. But overall, the quality is good. The, the fights will be good and the, f and the fighters are good. They're good fighters and they'll go from strength to strength. And Box Nation, by the way, are in negotiations with another three countries at the moment regarding doing a franchise to three other countries. Okay. So it's going to go, it's going to spread and it's the way sport will go. You know, in years to come, you've seen BT have just du du dipped their toe in the water regarding um, football. Right. They've taken one of the packages. Sky have come in with that massive bid because they know they, they don't want to lose it. But what's going to happen in years to come? You know, you, everyone knows what's going to happen. You'll be watching these matches. You'll be sitting there watching it on there. It'll be delivered to your. You know, you may even find Google big, bidding for the mm. for the Premiership or for big fights. It's going to happen. That's what the way the world is and the way it's going to go. And I've always been contrary to what people think. I've always been an innovator. You know, I did the first pay per view show here. I used to do the closed circuit stuff here. And I'm not the first person to do, but I'm involved with that. You know, I took boxing on IT, got it on terrestrial TV on ITV when BBC were the only game in town. I took it to Sky. I went to Satanta. You know, I've delivered all the all those big shows over the years. Put shows in stadiums where they never and taking boxing to places in this country it's never been. Yeah. So I know what you know. I like a challenge, and this you know, Box Nation for me is a, is an enjoyable challenge. I think when we I think I interviewed you back in two thousand and four. And I said, how much longer do you see yourself in, box, in, in boxing? I think back then your answer was a couple of years yeah, well, and you want a boxing legend. So what, what, how, you know, how much longer are you going to stay in the game for? I'm and, 60, and years, I'm 60 years of age. And, you know, and when I say 60, I'm a real young 60. I'm probably a 30-year-old 60. But you know, I'm a young 60. I've got lots of enthusiasm. I'm, I'm a workaholic. I'm up early in the morning. 
go to you know, bed late and, and I'd, as I say, this is what we do. We don't, we're not in snooker, we're not in darts, we're not in football, we're not in, we're in boxing. Mm. And that's why we have to be successful what we do. You know, the last couple of years we've lost, lost a lot of money. You know, we lost money on shows, um, we filed losses as far as the company's concerned, but we're here. You know, that money, if, if your company's losing money, you've got to put the money in. The losses have to be covered, so money has continued to be put in to cover that. And now, you know, as I say, now things, now things are, are really in a tough economy, are looking really good. So this is what we do, and we're good at what we do. You know, I've got a good staff and a good team around me. I've got people who've been working me, with me, some of them for, I mean, Ernie Draper's worked with me for 35 years, you know. Andy's 20 odd years, Dean's since, since Ernie Fossey passed away, you know, he's probably come to nine years now. These people have worked with me for years, many years they've worked with me, and they're a good quality team, good people, and that's what makes us a, a successful team. Brilliant, well thank you very much for your time. Thank Dave. you, I appreciate Cheers. it. Pleasure.